Well, the House has one, the Senate has one too, and today President Obama sent Congress his fiscal year 2014 budget proposal. The $3.8 trillion spending plan uh, would be dead on arrival in the House, but it is designed to jumpstart talks to achieve a so-called grand plan with Republicans, sort of middle of the road Republicans in the Senate, most especially to tame the nation's deficit. The Obama blueprint out today includes deficit reductions of $1.8 trillion over the next decade, achieved through higher taxes on the wealthiest Americans, including a 30% tax rate on those pulling in more than a million dollars a year of income. And as expected, there's a reduction in payments to Medicare providers and cutbacks in cost of living increases to Social Security recipients. The proposal also nearly doubles federal taxes on cigarettes to $1.95 a pack in order Order to fund a new preschool program. For more now on the president's spending plan, we're joined by Alan Kruger, chair of the White House Council of Economic Advisors. Mr. Kruger, welcome back. Great to have you with us. Thank you. One of the biggest items in this budget are the savings, some $230 billion, largely uh, from slower growth of Social Security benefits that come from using a different kind of inflation measure. Whose benefits will be reduced and on average by how much? The uh, proposal to switch to use the chain consumer price index to adjust for inflation is an idea that came up in the negotiations with Speaker Boehner and Senator McConnell. Uh, it's a technical fix. It addresses some issues that economists have raised in the past about the consumer price index. Um, and the Congressional Budget Office concludes that uh, it uh, grows about a, a quarter of a percentage point more slowly, not very much uh, in any particular year. Uh, one thing I would, would add, Tyler, is the president has insisted all along that we uh, include safeguards for the most vulnerable, uh, that we protect the oldest old, that their uh, benefits are adjusted, uh, as well as uh, those uh, who are just barely getting by. So not everyone's Social Security benefit would be reduced as a result of the switch to the so-called change CPI. There would be some, uh, uh, some blunting in there for certain individuals. And are we talking here, for the average check, uh, a difference of dollars, $10, $5, what? Do you have any idea? Well, it accumulates uh, over time because mm -hmm. the change index grows more slowly. And the uh, protections that the president has built in uh, would kick in at age 76. So it mm -hmm. uh, helps to protect the oldest old, and that gets phased in over, over time for individuals. $370 billion worth of Medicare cuts in the program. What do they consist of? Do they largely come from uh, reduced payments to drug makers? Uh, a lot comes from reduced payments to providers. The president has been very clear that he's not going to simply shift costs uh, onto seniors, uh, that he wants to have more efficiency in the system. Uh, so that we're not reducing quality and, and raising the cost for our seniors. Uh, and he also uh, would um, uh, have more means testing as part of Medicare. How much more then will those affluent, supposedly affluent Medicare recipients who pay premiums under Part B and D, how much more are they likely to pay and, and what's the measure of affluent for this case? Uh, it's a sliding scale and uh, offhand I don't, uh, I don't recall, I'm afraid, exactly where the cutoff was. Uh, for the means testing to start in for the premiums. Under, for the premiums. The All right, let's talk about where the uh, $580 billion in additional revenues come from. One area is the so-called Buffett rule, which would impose a 30% minimum tax on people who, whose incomes are more than a million dollars a year. Let me understand this, if I, if I might. Is this 30% on the marginal income above a million dollars or a flat tax on, on anyone who has incomes of a million dollars or more, should we be so lucky? It's a marginal tax, so it's on the income above. Does it include all sources of income, including dividends, capital gains, and carried interest, or what? It does. It broadly defines income. All right, let's talk about uh, the tobacco tax. It's uh, some $78 billion, and this would go to fund exactly what? It uh, goes to fund the universal uh, pre-kindergarten program. Uh, research has shown that students benefit throughout their lives if they get an early start in their education. High quality preschool seems to be a very effective payoff for the investment. Uh, so I think this is a, a very uh, good use of funds and I think it will also discourage more uh, teenagers from starting smoking in the first place. And the growth forecasts in the plan are about 2.3% in the later years of the 10 year plan. Is there anything we can do in the country to get growth going faster than that? That's lower than it's been in this, uh, in this country over the past 50 years, for example. 
Well, the budget is a plan uh, to strengthen growth and speed up job creation. That's exactly what uh, the president uh, has designed the budget to do. So it's critical that we make the kinds of investments that will speed up growth, like investing more in, in, in our infrastructure, our roads and our highways, uh, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, enabling more people to go on to college, helping uh, youngsters go to preschool. Uh, that will help growth in the long run. Uh, but because of slower population growth and slower growth in the working age population, in the assumptions in the budget, and we tried to be right. modest in our assumptions, uh, we assume that the long run rate of growth is around 2.3, 2.4%, okay. about the same as the Congressional Budget Office. I'm afraid we have to leave it there. Mr. Kruger, thank you again for being with us.